Today I'm going to share with you what is this book, what the uh, it's mean, it's interested in what we're going to develop in the coming months. Uh, so I will start with the um, what is Cubescape. Uh, Cubescape is the first uh, open source product that gives you a Kubernetes that supplies a Kubernetes security from A to Z. That's that's the place where we want to go. Right now uh, we have a uh, Cubescape. And the ability uh, to scan your manifest files and your configuration files um, to, to do a clean scan, to scan your container images, and uh, to uh, visualize your robust access control configuration. But more exciting, and I will share it with you as well. So, how do I start with Kubescape? The basic way to start with Kubescape. And to go to our Git repo uh, to copy this line and run it in any uh, machine that has a cube cup. That's it. I have Cubescape uh, installed, and now I can uh, run a uh, scan. So it takes a few seconds, uh, and I will see uh, in a few seconds. Yeah, we'll be able to see a table with the, the results. And I didn't run the whole scanner. Yeah, we'll talk about the whole scanner in a second. Uh, but now you can see that I, get a, I, I got a detailed report with the severity of each one of the controls and the failed resources. And if I want to understand more, I can use the minus V flag, which uh, basically and it will show me all the resources that uh, Kubescape has scanned, uh, which control failed on these resources, as well as uh, the controls that passed uh, for uh, this uh, uh, resource. So, for example, so for example, uh, here, uh, you can see that uh, I have a, a namespace, uh, or I think this is a, a better example. I have a pod, uh, it's a cube proxy pod, runs on cube system, and you see the number of uh, controls uh, that failed, their name. I can go to the documentation, and I can also go and can see the line uh, in the YAML definition uh, where it failed. Um, in general, if you go uh, to our uh, documentation, uh, you can see uh, that we have um, uh, several options in the and flag uh, that you can uh, use. Um, the important flags are uh, exceptions. I will talk about exceptions in details in this uh, discussion. Uh, the submit basically allows you to submit and the scan results to uh, the Cubescape uh, SAS uh, application. And, and then uh, the uh, Kit Local, if you don't want to send the data to the SAS, you can use the uh, Kit Local, but definitely uh, read and look at uh, the uh, documentation. If you have used the examples, uh, we have users who are using it in a completely isolated environment, air gap. And we have videos and explanations of how uh, you can do that. Uh, we have an awesome documentation in the depth, uh, you can uh, go and read and follow. Now I set control and I set scan. Uh, and uh, before we uh, uh, jump to the details, uh, I want to show you what is the control and what is the framework and what, what we are scanning. Uh, so a uh, control basically is a test. Uh, it's test that uh, is written in uh, Rego, uh, the uh, open policy agent uh, language. And uh, you can see all uh, the uh, Regos uh, that we have uh, in our uh, Git repository. And so if you go uh, to, uh, uh, to Rego library and uh, repository, uh, you're able uh, to see uh, all the uh, controls that uh, we have. Some of the 
control the required examples of optimization. Uh, for example, uh, I cannot know uh, what is the uh, resource CPU limit that you want to enforce in your organization. Uh, so you can go on and, and change that. Uh, I think in, you know, in the same, uh, in the same uh, level, I don't know what are the allowed image repositories in uh, uh, each one of the organizations uh, and users that uh, we serve. So you can go here and change it and tweak it to your uh, specific environment. This means that uh, if uh, you're pulling images from one of these repositories, the control will not fail. But if you're pulling images from a different repository, we will fail and we'll tell you uh, which deployment spots are doing that. The controls are being uh, assembled in uh, something which is called framework. And the framework is uh, something that you can uh, create uh, your own framework. And let's create one of uh, the CMCF. Oh, sorry. CMCF. Where are we now? Uh, and now we can uh, choose the controls uh, according uh, to the uh, stage, according to the different stages in CMCF. Or the, according to my uh, organization or, or team that I want them to uh, scan using this uh, framework. And, and once I apply, the framework will be created, um, which means uh, that uh, uh, everyone can use this framework uh, to scan. Yeah, I can go and if, if I want and add a more create more controls if we if I see. That uh, I need it or remove it, etc. And Kubestep can be integrated to your CI/CD and uh, to anyone you know, of uh, the uh, CI/CD, and uh, you can use it as Visual Studio, uh, Visual Studio extension. And um, we are adding land uh, in uh, this release, uh, so we will be able to use Kubestep as a uh, land uh, extension as well. After I scanned. And assuming that uh, I did submit uh, the results, I can click on the link here at the end of the scan, and it will bring me uh, to our UI. Uh, and and uh, we can we can look at the UI and, and see the uh, different uh, capabilities uh, that they uh, are in the uh, UI. I'm going to start uh, by describing the uh, new dashboard. That we just released. The idea was actually it came from users. Uh, the idea was that uh, while we're scanning the uh, clusters and we're showing the risk score for uh, individual clusters, people wanted to see what happens across uh, their entire uh, deployment. Uh, and if they have many clusters, they wanted to understand which one is more prone for risk, and which one is more important. Uh, to go ahead and uh, start uh, fixing. So we, we uh, created uh, in this, we are marking each one you know, of your cluster, red, meaning the top priority, uh, blue, medium, and green, uh, low. And you can see this arrow. The arrow basically shows you uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, the risk went up went down. Uh, if we look, we have a toolkit that uh, kind of show us uh, what, what are the number of vulnerabilities that I have according to the severity, and I can go to the ARBA graph for this specific cluster, and, and then we can see the score of the ARBA for each one of these clusters. And we can also see it in a graph, and you can see it here, and I can choose a different framework that I want to see or compare between the different clusters. And I can see the top pair controls in my organization. So, for example, here I can see that uh, um, the most common fail control is the automatic mapping of service account. And in Kubernetes, basically, uh, there is automatic mapping of service account. But uh, if your uh, workload doesn't require a service account or anything from the API server, maybe it's uh, wiser uh, to uh, end this flag and this failure. The automatic mapping of service account 
And so okay, either you need to duplicate your team uh, to do that, or um, you can go ahead and uh, fix that. Uh, the same thing goes to vulnerability rate. Uh, you can see the total number of vulnerabilities that I have uh, in my environment according to uh, different severities. And we can see the uh, top five CVEs. So you can see that this CVE is in 79 workloads. Uh, this CVE is in, 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 in the 60 workloads, etc. And the, the, I can go ahead and copy the CD and go to image scanning and search for this CD. And now I see all the container images that has uh, this CD in them. Yeah, I can go to uh, the latest scan and see only the latest scan results and basically uh, touch them uh, one by one. Okay, so we, we talked about uh, um, um, controls, we talked about framework, uh, we, uh, we, we looked at the dashboard, and now let's talk at, um, about the ways that you can deploy kubescape. So I showed you the uh, command line, uh, uh, running kubescape on any machine that has the two pattern, uh, as part of your CFD pipeline, as part of your visual extension. But there is another option, which is to run Cubescape and, and, and deploy it as a health chart. Basically, it will run Cubescape as part of your cluster. And if you look at my cluster, you can see that uh, once it is deployed, uh, we have a, a namespace called the ARMO system. And in our ARMO system, basically, we have a few pods uh, that are uh, working uh, with uh, uh, our uh, SAS application. But uh, you can also uh, work with the, uh, with the Cubescape uh, microservice. Uh, your, you, know, you can use the APIs uh, to train your scans and uh, to other activities. And it is uh, documented uh, in uh, our documentation, uh, and we did it uh, in order to be able uh, to uh, send results and trigger scans from Prometheus. Uh, this is also something that we recently added. Uh, you can use uh, Prometheus as a dashboard um, uh, if uh, you would like uh, to use it instead of uh, using our UI. Uh, Now, when we talk about configuration scanning, manifest file scanning, uh, we're showing you uh, the results based on uh, different clusters. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and decide which one uh, of uh, the frameworks will be shown in the uh, graph. Uh, basically, uh, you can uh, see uh, up to three uh, trends and uh, up to three uh, frameworks. So you can choose which one you want to uh, show. You can see that there are 12 frameworks, and I can choose which one I want to see okay, when I log in. Yeah, since I deployed the helm chart and in this case, and if I can trigger scan from the UI, uh, or I can set I can set scheduling scan scheduled scans, uh, for instance, once a week or once a day, uh, that they uh, will scan uh, automatically and send the results. The uh, results are seen uh, based on the frameworks, on the different frameworks, and then you can see the results uh, here. Uh, and uh, you can see historical results uh, here, and uh, you can choose which uh, result you want to focus on, and uh, then you can see. Um, we, we are able to show you drifts. So, for example, here, uh, you can see that the previous scan I had 63 failed resources, now I have 64. Uh, and if I log in uh, or if I click on it and I want to see the failed resources list, uh, I'm able uh, to see that uh, uh, the, new, the new failed resource uh, because it is colored in blue. Uh, if some resource here uh, should be uh, with 
property that uh, is causing it to fail. For example, um, these are all the uh, workloads that have cost plus null uh, in them. Uh, th there might be a case um, that, for example, in cube system, that the AWS node and the cube proxy doesn't require the host path mount to operate. And then I have the option to set as them as exception or set the entire namespace as exception, meaning that even future resources will not appear as failed resources. And the last thing I want to show you uh, when it comes to the uh, scanner result uh, is these indications. And we indicate for each control if it is a configurable control or uh, if it uh, requires cloud integration. Uh, and then uh, you can uh, go uh, to uh, our uh, documentation. Uh, or uh, go to the settings and just follow the instructions of how to use and uh, perform the cloud integration. Uh, or if it requires the host scanner. Now, the host scanner is something that we are really proud of. Uh, basically, uh, today, if you want to ask questions uh, about your project, for example, uh, you have two options either to run it manually, which is not scalable. Or to deploy a privileged demo set that will collect the data for you. Uh, but it will increase the risk uh, because uh, you have a single uh, privileged demo set uh, running, a privileged demo set running in an environment, basically just to collect uh, data uh, in a while that is needed once in a while. And what we've created, we created this design pattern. That only if you use the host scanner uh, flag, we are uh, scanning uh, for uh, these specific controls, uh, which means that you deploy something, it's privileged, it's a demo set, but it appears for a split of a second and it died. So we don't need to worry about uh, erasing the risk. The last thing that the controls that are able to do, uh, they are able to ask questions about image scanning results. And I will talk about it uh, uh, in a second when we will talk about image scanning. Now, this is uh, what we call control view. We're showing you each one of the controls and the resources that fail on each one of these controls. But there is also something which is called resource here, if you see all the resources that you have, for example, here I'm looking for deployment. Uh, and then you can see for each deployment which controls it is fed. Again, you can set exceptions from here as well, or read the documentation from here as well. Or you can click on this tool that we've seen uh, in the past. Uh, but uh, I think that more powerful here, so that's why I'm showing it on uh, this page. Uh, basically, it's uh, what we call uh, assistive remediation. We show you the control, we show you that it failed, and we, sh we show you the line which caused it to fail. Now, this is super powerful. Uh, you can see uh, that uh, this is uh, pink. It means that uh, there is a line in your YAML file is causing us or it's causing this control to fail. Uh, and uh, you can change, uh, you can uh, copy the object or download the YAML file and then uh, use your uh, editor in order to fix that. A, a, a green line means that something is missing in your uh, YAML file. Um, and you can add that in order uh, to remediate the issue. Uh, in the next release, we have the ability to share using JIRA, and, and uh, we will have the deep issues in the stack as well. And so you will be able from here to click it, and share it, and assign it uh, to the uh, right team to remediate with all the tips and uh, helps that uh, you need. Uh, this is another example, et cetera, et cetera. So you can, you can go one by one and uh, uh, fix uh, these issues. OK, so uh, this was. Uh, 
Okay, so this was configuration scenario. Um, and then you can uh, go ahead and, uh, and uh, try it uh, yourself. And with the ability to export the exceptions from here, and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, keep them uh, in your infrastructure as code, and you can tweak them and apply them to other clusters as well. Uh, and if you look at the documentation, we have a very uh, extensive documentation on the uh, exceptions and how they work and how you can uh, tweak them in order for it to be more The next section I'm going to cover is image scanning. Um, again, here uh, I can scan from the uh, UI. Uh, in the next release, we will uh, support recurring scan. Right now, uh, it is scanning every day at uh, midnight. Let's see. So if I run a new character. Again, from the you can see that we have the scanning at midnight every day. And, and uh, basically, in the next release, you will be able to set it from here, from the UI. Uh, we have the ability to uh, filter uh, the images that has critical and, or high vulnerabilities and has fixes and our uh, digital vulnerabilities are a uh, remote code execution. Remote code execution are the most dangerous vulnerabilities in our case because it means that your workload is uh, exposed to the uh, internet. It means that someone uh, will be able to leverage and exploit uh, your uh, cluster. And this is uh, where I want to stress that the, some of the controls that we are doing are sending your manifest files, API servers, settings, and the workload. But we are also able to look at your image scanning results. And we are able to triage it with the different attributes. For example, I'm going to show you So here you have a workload. We are seeing vulnerabilities exposed to this uh, to external traffic, which means basically we take on deployments, we see they have service, we uh, connect it to the vulnerabilities that they have, and you know, we're able to uh, ask a question uh, about it and uh, to show it uh, to you. Uh, and uh, uh, let us focus uh, on the important uh, stuff that we need to remediate. Uh, once you see that, uh, you have uh, uh, two uh, options. You have uh, one option uh, to look at all the scans that you have and filter them and, and uh, look for the workloads that you need uh, or the uh, clusters that you need for to focus on the latest scan. And then here is the metadata uh, of uh, each one of the scans, but you can uh, go in and, and see uh, the vulnerabilities uh, on uh, each one of your images. We have the ability, we have a graph that shows you the vulnerabilities over time. And you're able to set exceptions here as well. So, for example, if you want, because you think this is false positive or you have virtual fetching or you know that the team is working on fixing it and you don't want to see as part of the total number of vulnerabilities that you need to fix. You can go and set them as exceptions. And the cool thing about uh, setting exceptions is that uh, you can uh, log in and you can uh, filter, for example, based on security. And then, so let's say that uh, I want to take uh, the, uh, I want to take uh, out uh, all the neglectable. Uh, I need to uh, filter them out and then uh, mark them. Or let's say that I want to uh, set all the vulnerabilities in curve uh, to be uh, shown as exceptions. I can uh, click uh, here and uh, they return uh, all of them at once. Uh, now I can decide if I want only the medium vulnerabilities, low and neglectable that are connected to the uh, 
uh, you know, have vulnerabilities, and, and I can do that uh, for years. So that's um, basically uh, the image scanning and the exception of image scanning um, and the control that we have in image scanning. And the next thing is the Argot Visualizer. And here, I need to choose the cluster uh, if I want to uh, be able to look at the raw data to control it in the cluster. Uh, and here, basically, we have uh, three different capabilities. The first capability is uh, to use deep in queries. Some of these queries are actually running as controls. Uh, so you can go from the control to the uh, graph uh, and uh, vice versa. Uh, so if I want to, to show all the cluster are being I can do it in a click on the last one. And then I can uh, go ahead and do other stuff uh, as well from here, like show roles or show related uh, resources. Um, and then uh, the next thing I have is the ability to ask who can. So let's say I want to know who can uh, please get and watch uh, and, and the resource to be the it will show me uh, all the uh, subjects that can do that, but it's not showing only the subject, it's showing you also if a workload is connected to the service account, it will show that as well. And uh, you can see by namespace, and you can uh, go and uh, look at it, and uh, you can uh, do things like uh, uh, showing according to the type. So aggregate them according to the type, and I can go and see the subject, and then the roles, and then the capabilities. So that is uh, really, really cool. And the last thing you can do is to run investigation. Uh, so let's say uh, I have the, uh, this uh, user, and I don't know what this user is doing. Uh, I can uh, say, you know, show me the role of the user, and then show me all the resources that this uh, user is able to uh, do things uh, on. And, and here, you know, it shows me uh, quite fast that I have a misconfiguration because this uh, role, this role, shadows this role. And basically, and this user is actually cluster admin, which means that all the other roles are redundant. Uh, and you know, this is super cool and super easy to understand from uh, just uh, uh, and looking at this graph. And we know that Argos is super complicated and uh, it uh, really helps us. If you want to learn more in uh, how to uh, use Cubescape for your own needs, uh, we have a, a demo a channel uh, where we have a, a really, really short video that uh, you can go and enjoy and, and view. Uh, and, and uh, it, it will show you how uh, you can utilize and get more, much more for QScape. So that's basically what we're doing in the short term. Uh, what we're going to end, uh, and right now you're, you're able to scan clusters. Uh, we're showing everything on a cluster level. Uh, many of you came to us and said, but we're uh, scanning sometimes a young file, we're scanning a code rate. Code repositories. Uh, we want to scan to be able to scan not images in the cluster. We want to scan uh, in, in image registries. Uh, so we are going to add a section here which will be called code. Uh, and then uh, we are going to show you uh, the uh, code repositories, uh, scanning, uh, as well as the uh, uh, image. Repository scanning. Yeah, so this is uh, coming uh, soon. And, and then the uh, next thing that is uh, uh, going to come, and I show you the first step uh, when we when we talked about uh, when we talked about the ability to share, and we are going to add this share button uh, in, a, in many places in the product. Uh, we are going to have the ability to export uh, papers uh, to CSV files because we do understand that we need to collaborate for filing and, and uh, we are going uh, to do that. Uh, by the way, I don't know if uh, most of you know, but uh, uh, basically we have a user uh, management 
section in the program. Uh, you can uh, invite users to use your account, uh, and uh, you can uh, definitely uh, create a new organization. And if you look at the documentation, documentation, and we have in the hero section, and it is talking about authentication with single sign on. So you can also connect um, it to your uh, directory and uh, use the single sign on. The uh, things that we are going to add uh, moving on, um, we, we are going to add an inventory, an inventory section. And basically, the inventory will show you uh, all the resources that uh, we have uh, found. It will show you the relationship between uh, these uh, resources, the priorities, the findings, and uh, findings over time. So it will be, uh, it will be able uh, to show you drifts. Uh, and uh, uh, the end goal for us is to be able to uh, give you actionable insights of what you need to fix, what is the priority of uh, fixing all the findings uh, in your environment. At the end of the day, we want to uh, give you a solution that doesn't uh, uh, open an app of red alerts, but also give you the ability to understand the context of these alerts and how to prioritize and remediate uh, uh, alerts. We want to save you uh, the work and not to add uh, more work. Yes, sir. The uh, next thing we're going to add is the uh, policy. Uh, right now, if you see just and it scans your environment and shows you the findings. You want to be able to add uh, what, we, what we call a policy and the ability to enforce specific controls. In, in clusters, we are going to force to use a mission controller, uh, but uh, we want to use it uh, for a CI pipeline as well. And uh, basically, the idea is that uh, you can set guardrails. And uh, for example, I don't want to have a privilege pods in my environment except for these lists of uh, approved uh, pods, uh, workloads, deployments, whatever. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, we are going to do that. Uh, all in all, it's going to be, uh, to be in the next uh, three to four months. Um, and if you want to learn more about what we're doing and when we're doing it, you can definitely uh, uh, and yourself to our Discord channel, uh, which uh, we are announcing a new stuff uh, there. Thank you very, very much uh, for uh, being with me on this uh, uh, webinar uh, on uh, CubeScale, uh, what's new and what's coming and what's going to come. Thank you and have a lovely day.